here today for one reason and one reason only, and that's to lift up and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, our glorious Savior. Amen? Amen. All right, well, we're going to pray, and we're going to get into our time of worship this morning. Lord God, we thank you today for life, for freedom, for the freedom that we have today to stand and proclaim your greatness in this place. Lord, I can't imagine what today means for so many who lost their lives and lost their loved ones on 9-11 so many years ago. And Lord, we pause today for just a second to reflect on those who rushed toward the danger instead of running out. And we thank you for their lives too. Father, we thank you that you still protect us as a country. We don't know why because we turn our back on you so often. But Lord, thank you for your hand over the United States of America. We thank you for your over this church and we ask that you would help us to be uh, be that light be that beacon here at 78 mcgee road that proclaims and lifts up the name of jesus because that's what we're all about lord we ask that you inhabit our praise today and give us uh, a sense of your presence this day as we shout out the name of jesus hey. to the world and we ask in your powerful strong name let the church say amen, amen. if you would stand with us as we begin our time of praise this morning Morning. One, two, three, four.
see Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you
in Jesus name sing that again Jesus 
seated. Read you something out of uh, Isaiah. That's appropriate, I think, uh, as we're in the times we're in. Isaiah, Isaiah 520. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Father, Lord, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the time we live in. Father, we thank you that we have you to turn to, Lord, Father. That there's something there, Lord. That there's someone there, Lord, when we need the hope, Lord. Amen. When we need the security, when we need the assurance, Lord. Father, that we're going to make it because you're there, Lord. Amen. Father, 21 years ago, the terrorists decided to invade the United States, Lord. Father, you allowed that for some reason, whatever the reason, Lord. We can certainly ask when we get up there, Lord, why. But you allowed that, Lord. And a lot of people died here in the United States, Lord, from that. When those planes ran into the towers, Lord. Father, but... In the 21 years since, Lord, there's also been many, 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 many service people, Lord, that have died overseas, mainly in the Middle East, Lord. Father, a lot of those individuals, Lord, were reserves, Lord, that weren't used to be calling up to go in a real battle, Lord, in a real war, in a real fight, Lord. Father, a lot of them didn't have the experience. They had book experience, but no real experience, Lord. And Father, during those 21 years, thousands have lost their lives overseas also, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for most of us, Lord. We can sit here and we look at that. Lord, we're not there. Father, we can still come to church on Sunday morning. We can still drive around. We can still go out to eat on Friday night, Lord. We can still go shopping. We can still do most of what we want to do, Lord. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Amen. 
And Father, also, it's kind of ironic that this past week, Lord, a world leader died, Lord. Father, been on the news over and over and over and over and over and over again. Been on social media over and over and over again, Lord. Father, when each one of us probably in this building right here, when we die, Lord, probably there's a slim chance that it'll be on social media, that it'll be on world news, Lord. But Father, it's ironic because when we get up there to be with you, Lord, Father, it's going to be the same, whether it was Queen Elizabeth or whether it's one of us, Lord. You're going to welcome us, Lord. And Father, you're going to just be so thankful, Lord, that we're there, Lord. Amen. Father, thank you again that we have that assurance. Amen. And also, Lord, thank you, Lord, that this past Tuesday, when some individual, Lord, decided they wanted to throw something through our doors, Lord, that that's all they did. Yes. Lord, your protection was there, even though we may not think so, Lord. Father, that individual could have come in the building. That individual could have had a gun, a knife, anything, Lord, and come in here after the people that were here, Lord, but he didn't. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you were there, Lord, for protection, Lord. Thank you for that you protect your building, Lord. Yes, a couple of doors may have got ruined, Lord. But that's okay. They're repairable, Lord. And Lord, on a positive note, Father, we just give all the uh, honor to Brother Davis, who will be a pastor, Lord. This evening, Lord, as he has his ordination, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for an individual like that. That came to this church several months ago, Lord. And has really uh, helped. Helped the youth. Helped people here, Lord. Helped the church grow, Lord. Father, thank you for him, Lord. Thank you for his dedication. Thank you that you called him, Lord, Amen. and thank you that he's going to serve you, Lord. Amen. Father, he's always served you, but now he's going to serve you in a little more official capacity, Lord. Father, thank you, and Father, we just can't wait to this evening, Lord. Father, when we have that ordination and that celebration of that afterwards, Lord. Father, it's great to be able to celebrate things. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the message our pastor will have. And Father, I ask these things in the most precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements, just a few. We'll go over the other, announce the other announcements at the end of the service. Uh, as usual, if you're a visitor here, there's a little tear out here. You can tear out and put in the offering plate at the end of the service which I don't think there's any visitors, but there might be somebody that hasn't filled this out before. But it's also a prayer request. If you want to tear it off also and put a prayer request on there, you can do that and put it in the offering plate too at the end of the service. The only other big thing that's coming up in here, uh, besides the ordination service for Mr. Davis this evening at six o'clock, is deacon nomination next uh, Sunday morning. So you'll have a chance to uh, nominate some more deacons. Uh, there'll be a list next Sunday of uh, who are already serving, so you won't nominate those people again that are already serving. So until then, let's get up and greet one another in the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you.
right, good morning, everybody. Good to see you this morning. Y'all look nice and chipper and excited. I don't know, it's just there's a air in here this morning. I appreciate it. It's good. Uh, maybe it was the great worship we had. I enjoyed that. Amen. All right, well, uh, if you have your Bibles, you want to go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 6. That's where we'll be this morning. Um, before I get into the sermon, I, I do really, really, really want to strongly encourage you, if, if you don't have plans, if you're not working, please be here tonight. Uh, this is going to be a great service. We're going to ordain Matt. Um, it's going to be exciting. We're going to have food afterwards, so there you go right there. Food that you will bring. Uh, either bring finger food or some desserts. Uh, we, we've got a cake coming and uh, all that. We'll celebrate, have a good time afterwards, but I mean, if, if, if you've never, maybe, maybe you've never even witnessed or a uh, seen an ordination service, I want to encourage you to come tonight and just see, you know, what do we do? Why do we do this? Why do, why do the people put their hands on his head and shoulders and, you know, what's all that about? We'll, we'll talk about it. And, uh, but I, I really want to strongly encourage you tonight. Let's, let's have a Sunday morning crowd on Sunday night and uh, really uh, just send Matt off into in, in his calling and have a good time tonight. So please be here tonight and uh, we, we're going to have a good time. So, Amen. All right, well, this is our, our second week in, um, uh, in our distinctly different series. Um, uh, we're just kind of working through uh, Luke's Sermon on the Plain here. It's, it's the equivalent of Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Uh, there's, it's a little bit shorter. We talked about that la la last week. So, um, But, you know... Christ calls us to be distinctly different, right? We, we kind of use, I'll, I'll throw up the pictures there. We talked about, you know, there's an app on your phone. If you have a smartphone, you can get this app where you, you find the differences, right? And uh, go ahead and show that there. You know, go ahead to the next one there. But, you know, you get all the, the small, little, minute, little differences, right? It's a little concentration game, good brain training, I guess. Well, as Christians, we're supposed to be distinctly different. We're not supposed to be just a little different. We're supposed to be as different as this, you know, McDonald's and Olive Garden right there. <laughs> okay, you know, ca Christ calls us to live differently, to, to talk differently, to have different attitudes. And, and that's really what the uh, Sermon on the Mount, Sermon on the Plain is really all about. So uh, we're going to get into this more. Last week we talked about it was the earthly versus the eternal, right? It's, it's you know, the here and now versus looking ahead for eternity and uh, today we're looking at distinctly different love we're going to look at what jesus says about love right um you know our culture says a lot about who we should love right they'll tell us in a heartbeat right but but what does the bible say what does jesus say about who we should love and um we're going to look into that this morning. So let's read the scripture here. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, we're in Luke 6, uh, starting in verse 27. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on the cheek, turn to him on the other also. If someone uh, takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful." Amen. Uh, this, is a, this is a challenging passage. 
Um, there, there are no exceptions in here, right? There's no, except in this case, right? You know, this is this is hard stuff. This is hard teaching. We're going to look at it in a minute. Did you, did you really Jesus say that I have to give to everyone? And you know, we're going to look at what this means and how it applies to our life uh, this morning. But I, I think before we get into it, we need to understand two things. Jesus says, "Love your enemies." We have to ask her two questions. Well, who's our enemies? And what is love, right? So, um, our enemies. Who are your enemies, right? Is, is it, we're just talking like North Korea and Russia, right? Or, or maybe, maybe it's people who disagree with us. Maybe it's people that don't like us. I'm going to try to equally offend everybody here in just a minute. Republicans, Democrats. Maybe it's that high school rival football team. They're our enemies, right? You know, uh, you know Brookwood versus Gray. Or, or uh, you know, all the different sports teams. You know, I, I found myself yesterday. Uh, well, my favorite team is the Georgia Bulldogs, but I found myself rooting against another team. Oh yeah, come on, lose, lose. You know, wow. Uh, you know, um, I need I need help. So, <laughs> but who are our enemies? Right? Is it is it atheists? Is it Muslims? Is it coworkers at our jobs? Is it peers at our school? That teacher that doesn't like us? That we think is—is is it the police? Is it the Black Lives Matter activists? Is it racist people? Is it people who throw bricks through church doors? <laughs> you know. So who? You know, we'll come back to that in just a minute. But who are our enemies? Right? I, I think our enemies. And hopefully, I offended everybody. You know, by <laughs> pointing out a little of something. Right? Uh, but. I think our enemies will probably vary according to who we are, right? My enemies might not be the same as your enemies, right? Uh, we might have some enemies in common, but who are... So, I think you have to look at that. So, But the second question there says, what is love? I started to like, should I sing it? What is love? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that old song. Yeah, no. See, I can't sing, so we're not going to do that. But, you know, what? what is love, right? Uh, is it just an emotion? Is it, you know, one definition is a, a feeling, passionate feeling towards someone. Um, love, love is the number one topic of poetry, music, books, all sorts of things. I mean, it is, it is a big thing, right? Countless number of books. Uh, if you're a evolutionary person, evolutionist, uh, you know they, they say love is just a chemical reaction in your brain that aids in your survival. Is that really what love is? Um, one one blogger, uh, I was googling some stuff this week. Uh, one blogger says love is a deep sense of care and commitment towards a person. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But uh, if you're if you're down with the DC talk, here you go. There you go. There's an old song there. Hey, haven't you heard? Love is a serious word. Hey, I think it's time you learned. I don't care what they say. I don't care what you heard. The word love, love is a verb. So, all right, and that's what we're going to get into here in just a minute. Uh, love is a verb, church. Love requires action. There, I can't believe I just did DC talk. Anyway, whatever. But uh, how many people? That was like my first Christian concert I went to, right? It was at Burkmore High School. They came to Gwinnett County here back in the day. Anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but love, according to DC talk, and I believe in the Bible, I believe that's our first point on your outline there. Love is a verb. Love is action. Distinctly different love involves action, church. Look at the scripture there. Look at verse 27 and what we just read. He says, But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. He says, Do good to those who hate you. Do good. That's, that requires action. That involves us more than just having a feeling. <laughs> love, love is more than a feeling, all right? Um, words are important, right? We, we talked to, uh, about this Last week when we talked about our intentions versus our actions a little bit. Words are important, but they will fall short. Sometimes we say things, we make promises, and we're not able to, to complete them. But our actions, church, will never lie. They are always complete. Our actions are what they are, good or bad. Right? Sometimes we can say things with our words and we don't quite pan out what we do. But our actions, church, always involve fulfillment. That's what we do. Um, our actions never lie. 
you know, this is important because think about what Jesus did. Jesus went to the cross for us, right? This is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus just didn't love us in heart and mind and thought, oh, he went to the cross for us. And we'll, we'll come back to that in just a minute. But, um, so, question for you. We're going to move, I know some of you are like, whoa, six points this morning. We're, we're going to move quick, I promise. So, but my question here before we move on to number two is, is this, what act will you and I take to love our enemies? What will we do? You know, can we bake somebody cookies? Can we buy their lunch? These are just some things. Can we mow their lawn? Can we give them a gift? Can we help them in a, in a time of need? What will we do? Now again, I hope as, as we go through this sermon, we're thinking about our enemies. Maybe there's somebody that comes to your mind that you consider an enemy. Uh, and I really want to challenge you in each one of these points to, to do these things. But the first thing we need to do is to take action. What will we do to love our enemies this week? All right, number two, distinctly different love involves blessing others. Distinctly different love uh, involves blessing others. If you recall last week, we talked about what it means to be blessed when we went through the Beatitudes. Blessed are those here. But today, it's all about being a blessing to somebody else. All right, we, we receive blessings from the Lord, but guess what? God wants us to bless other people too. Um, you know, being a blessing is, is very similar to is very similar to like being a, an action, if you will. But but it, it's asking God to show them favor and grace. Remember, we talked about the definition. You know what it means to be blessed, so that they would be happy. Right? Being blessed is, is getting the favor of God through His grace and being happy because of it. Well, now God says, okay, take that blessing that you got and give it to somebody else. We, we ask God to bless them, our enemies. What? What? How, how can we, you know, how can I ask God to bless the Muslims who, who did what they did to the towers there? What, you know, how, how does that happen, you know? Today is, is 9-11, right? And I was praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? How much do you want me to, to bring up today? It's, it's been 21 years. We definitely need to talk about it, I think. Uh, those 2,977 individuals who lost their lives, like Brother Jim mentioned, either... Just doing what they normally do, going to work, living their life, and then there's those who, who ran into the building to help other people, they, they gave their lives too. Um, you know, the, the theme you see there on the, on the TVs, it says, you know, never forget, right? That, that's the kind of the theme that has come up from 9-11. From and, and, you know, I, I, was, I was like, what is that? Focused on what? Never forget. What does that mean? You know, and uh, I went online, searched around. There's all sorts of articles. What people think "never forget" means, and uh, came up with like six different things. You know, we never forget the people who lost their lives. We never forget the people who gave the sacrifice, and, and so on. But sometimes I wonder if people never forget the other other side of that. We never forget what they did to us. And we, we focus on some radical Muslim extremists who did this. And we, hmm, they're our enemies. God, does God really want me to, to pray and ask God to bless them? Because they're my enemy, right? They want to kill me, right? And when you say that, I, I think, I mean, again, there are no exceptions in this church. Jesus didn't say, except for those who want to kill you, or whatever. He just said, Bless your enemies. And so how do we do that as a, as a nation? How do we do that as Christians today? I, I think when you ask God to bless your enemy, it doesn't mean that you wish them success and that they would keep doing what they're doing. That's not what blessing's about. But I think blessing involves that, that God work in their life, reveal yourself to them, show them the truth so that they can be blessed and have a blessed life like I might have as a follower of Christ. I think that's what blessing our enemies is all about. It's not saying, oh yeah, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> keep, keep beating me up. You know, you're my enemy. No, no it, blessing, asking God to bless somebody is asking for 
God to show favor and grace in their life so that they could find that happiness that you and I find from being blessed by God. Um, I, I think that's important. That's an important distinction there. All right, number three. Distinctly different love involves prayer. Um, right here in verse 28, uh, Jesus says, pray for those who mistreat you. Um, pray for those who mistreat you. And, and the Lord an example this week. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, on, I'm sure many of you have already heard and, and seen what happened to our, our nice front doors here. We're just remodeling some wood, you know, paneling that looks good. But uh, <laughs> um, on Tuesday afternoon at 3.40, uh, Matt, myself, Stacy, and David already left just shortly before. We're minding our business, working here, and I see a gentleman walk up to the front door. And uh, I, I get up to go greet him and meet him at the door, and I get... Out, out of my office into the hallway and then I hear the noise. I'm like, what in the world's going on? I realize he's breaking the glass, throwing bricks through our, our church doors. And uh, I'm like, wow. You know, so we, we call the police. We, we take care of all that. We clean up. Dave comes back up here. We spend an hour and a half cleaning up glass. Uh, Matt gets on the ball real quick, calls the, the great people who put our sound booth together. Uh, and they came up and boarded up the doors for us in about two hours. Uh, that, that was great. We got it handled. Uh, hopefully they'll be fixed this in the next week or, or this coming week. But you know what I'm really proud of? The first thing we did after all the crazy was kind of finished, the staff, we circled up and we prayed for this guy. Amen. You know, we, we didn't pray, oh Lord, get him back and strike him dead for doing what he did to your, uh, one of the news reporters to a holy place, right? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a church, you know. But we, we prayed for him as, as staff and as church members here. We said, God, I don't know what's going on with this guy. They still haven't caught him. But Lord, if he needs help, may, may, may he get the help that he needs. May, may we even, you know, help him. If there's some kind of angst he has against our church or God or Christians in general, or I don't know. If he, if he needs help because he's on drugs, you know, Lord, may, may he get the help. May he be healed. And we prayed for him. And this was a perfect example here. Jesus says in verse 20, pray for those who mistreat you. Um, it's interesting. I, I got my 15 minutes of fame this week by being on uh, CBS 46, and then we got to be on WSB Radio, got to talk with Sandra Parrish and other people. But in both cases, I specifically mentioned that we pray for this guy, we forgive him, we pray that you know that he gets the help that he needs. I specifically, well, when you know they cut that part out and they don't talk. I will say though that WSB did mention it. You know the the CBS did not. They cut that part out, but. But uh, uh, WSB Radio did mention that we prayed for him and, and forgave him. So uh, props, props to them. But um, I know there's only so much time, right? But, uh, you know, do we, again, here's the thing. When we, we have our enemies, right, people that mistreat us, whoever they are, do we talk about them or do we talk to the Lord about them? Amen. That's what we should do. That's what Jesus says. When people mistreat you, pray for them. Don't, don't gossip about them. Pray for them. And we'll continue to pray for this guy. And, and for you, each of you, if, if there's somebody that you consider an enemy, maybe it's a co-worker at your job that's just out to get you, is causing problems, drama, whatever, do you pray for them? Or do we just talk about them to everybody else in the office? No. Pray for those people. That's how we love our enemies. That's what Jesus says. All right, number four. Uh, distinctly different love involves living by the golden rule. A distinctly different love involves living by the golden rule here. Um, there, Jesus gives some specific examples here in these in verses 27, 28, and 39, uh, 30 here. Uh, he kind of shares some things with his audience in the first century that they would understand. When we read them, we're like, what does that mean exactly? So I want to go through three of these with you uh, this morning, and I th think it'll help us understand a little bit more what, what Jesus was talking about here. In, but in uh, the first verse there, in verse 27, he says, if someone strikes you on the cheek, turn to them 
and let them strike you on the other cheek, right? Uh, this is more about insult, really, than it is about injury. It's, this is not saying, if someone comes up to you and starts beating you up, just let them beat you up, okay? That, that's what it kind of sounds like, right? If somebody strikes you on the cheek, boom! Well, th there's the, the history behind this. I, I, by the way, I believe the Bible says that we have the right to defend ourselves. I mean, there are examples in the book of Acts where Paul defended himself before the Roman court, and he said, hey, I've got these rights. You can't mistreat me, all right? But, so what is this saying here about someone who comes and strikes you on the cheek? What, what is that about? Do I just, you know, it's not about letting somebody beat you up. This is, this is more of a legal thing that was done in the first century. It, it was more about insults. If, if I took somebody to court in the first century, and I sued them for whatever reason, and I was wrong, they could legally come at me at the end of the judgment by the judge and slap me on the cheek. That was the ultimate insult to a Jewish person who's made in the image of God. Slapping them in the cheek on the face was an, the ultimate insult. If you remember when Jesus was before the Sanhedrin, right? And, and they said, you know, tell us this. And then the high priest uh, you know, they, they strike Jesus on the cheek, right? Oh, you have spoke blasphemy. That was the ultimate insult they thought. So they struck Jesus. You know, like, okay. So, so when, it, when it comes to here in our day, you know, striking someone on the cheek here, it's, it's more about if someone insults you. If someone says all sorts of things, they slander you, they lie about you. Oh, have you heard about Beth? Oh, yeah, she's that new teacher. And then, you know, they, oh, you, you know whatever. Uh, if, if someone insults you like that, that's, that's what it's speaking about. So I think what Jesus is saying here is we should be willing, church, to endure take a defenseless posture when people insult us. We don't strike back. We don't rear back. Oh, you insulted me, so I'm going to insult you. Your mama, da, da, da. Well, your mama, da, da. You know, we don't, we don't respond in kind, okay? That's what striking on the cheek is all about. All right, number two here, Jesus says, if someone takes your cloak, right? What's that about? Well, the cloak was the outer garment. The tunic was your shirt, your inner garment, right? So just to make sure everybody knows that. But your cloak was your outer garment. Um, again, this is, it kind of has some legal stand, um, I guess, standing in here. Uh, by law, according to Leviticus 22, you were not illegally allowed to take someone's coat if you sued them. If you took them to court something they owed you, you could not, you could take their sheep or their cows or whatever, their chickens or their camels, whatever, but you could not legally take someone's coat from them because it was considered like essential for life. It was something that you had to have in order to live, right? They didn't have the, the thank goodness for William Carrier and his invention of the air conditions and heaters and all that, you know, that we have that we love today. Uh, I could have never survived a uh, hundred years ago without air conditioning and central heat and air. I just, I'm a wimp. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure I could have. But anyway, I'm just telling you. But so, so here Jesus says, if someone takes your coat, give them your tunic as well. Okay, what's this all about here? Um, Jesus is saying again, we need to have a posture Man, if someone takes what is rightfully yours that they are not supposed to take from you, give them your shirt too. He, he's saying we, Jesus is saying, church, that we need be, to be willing to let go of our possessions, the things that we think we have the rights, right, as Americans, right? We have all these rights. The things that we possess, we need to be willing to give those up and say, you know what? I think this is mine, but you know what? Maybe God wants me to give it to you. And I think that's what he's specifically talking about here. Again, there, there's no exceptions in these passages here. One person from another, we're, we're supposed to, to just to be willing to give up our possessions here. Uh, verse 30, Jesus says, Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. This is probably the most difficult one. What in the world? 
if somebody takes something, they can just keep it, according to Jesus? Wow. All right, well, there's, there's a hint in here. If, if we're going to get to this in a minute when we get back to the very bottom part of the Scripture. But again, this, this has to do with financial dealings here. This is talking about when people loaned each other money. Uh, if you remember, in Jewish culture, they had uh, loans that they would give people and they would charge a certain amount of interest. Well, every seven years in the Jewish culture, they had what they call was the Sabbath year. And according to the Old Testament scriptures, every seven years, all debts would be wiped away, wiped away. No matter if that person had been paying them faithfully or not, if they still owed more money than they you know, should have already paid up, every seven years, those debts were wiped clean. So what, just like in our day, people know the law, right? And they work around it, right? Uh, I saw this when uh, the Affordable Care Act came into play. You remember that any employee over 20 hours had to be given insurance according to the Obamacare rules. Well, what did employees do? They said, okay, fine. We won't have full-time employees. We'll hire two part-time employees for 19 hours or less. And that way they're legally under the law and they don't have to provide insurance. That's what companies did, right? They, people work around it, right? So, so here is this legal thing in Jewish history where, okay, if I have the ability to loan somebody money, but I don't think they're going to pay me back, I, I won't give them the money because I know they're not going to pay me back or there's only one year left in the, uh, before the, the year of Sabbath and then all the debt's going to be wiped out. And so people would not loan people the money thinking, I'm, I'm never going to get it back. Or I don't know if I'm going to get it back because there's only one year to the year of Sabbath, so I might as well just give up. And what happened here is Jesus is saying, no, be willing to give anybody money, no matter what, if, if you think they're not going to pay it back or not. Be willing to give. That's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here. And you can say, how do you know that's the, the loaning of the money? Well, if you keep reading here, it explains that. It says, if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that, and it's repaid in full. And so he goes on there in those last couple of verses, explains he's, he's talking about a financial giving here. I, you know, is Jesus talking about giving somebody a sandwich or giving somebody $20 in our day and time? Maybe. Perhaps. But in, in the first century, he's specifically talking about financial dealings. We, and so what does that mean for, for you and I today? Church, I, I think we need to be willing to financially give and support people without the I guess the understanding or the attitude that well they'll pay me back if they pay you back great but we need to trust and give and keep in mind too we're talking about loving our enemies not just our our friends or people that we love but we're talking about being willing to love and to give to people whom we consider our enemies to, to financially help them even if we think man I'll never see that again you know what? God, God's given me the ability to help that person, so I'm going to do it. That's, that's what Jesus is talking about. Uh, and he gives those three specific examples. Uh, I'm sure they understood that pretty well. And then we get to verse 31, which is the, the golden rule, right? You know, this is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is the essential teaching, really, that, that comes from Christ. You know, he, he talks about how he loves us. It, it, the Bible doesn't call it the golden rule. It kind of became that over time. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's called the golden rule because it just epitomizes the teaching of Jesus. Do to other people what you would have them do to you. And that is like totally opposite of our culture today, right? It's our culture says, do to them what they did to you, right? It's payback. It's revenge. It's get even, right? But Jesus says, no. Treat them how you want to be treated. 
and, and love them how you want to be loved. That, that's the key. You know, I was looking at, thinking about Samson in the Old Testament. In, in the book of Judges, he, he was somebody who lived by the do to them what they did to you. If, if you remember the story of Samson, every chance that the Philistines did something, Samson took revenge. That was his motive. And he lived by that. Well, Jesus says, no. Live and treat other people how you want to be treated, church. And that's what we need to look at as far as loving our neighbors, loving, loving our enemies um, today. All right, number five. See, I told you we're going to blew right through these here. Number five, distinctly different love involves storing up credit in heaven. Distinctly different love involves storing up credit in heaven. Uh, in verses 32 through 36, uh, he gives the different reasons for being you know, distinctly different. But in these verses, there's a word that's repeated in here. And it's the word credit, right? Look at the verse. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? And he says in verse uh, 33, and if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? So there's this idea of what good is it? What credit is it for you? Right? Uh, that's a, a banking term, right? You're, you're making a deposit, right? We are. You know, if you know this in marriage, right? In marriage, good marriage advice, teenagers, listen up. <laughs> when you get married, think of your marriage like a bank account. If you take a lot of deposits from that marriage and doing bad things and messed up things, then you're not going to have a very good marriage. But if you constantly put in that marriage and you're making deposits and credits, then you're going to have a good marriage that when you accidentally mess up and make a deposit, uh, like I did this week, speaking of deposits, I forgot to put my check in the bank this week and my wife said, um, did you? So, so hopefully I've made enough good credits to, where she didn't get real upset with me. <laughs> that, that, you know, eh. and, and, but if, if we so good, we, we build that good relationship in a marriage, right? So it's the same thing in our spiritual lives, right? We, we want to build up credits. Now, again, uh, Jesus talks to, in verse 35, he says, then your reward will be great. We, we don't do these things to get a reward. We don't do these things because we're afraid of punishment, but that's just the, the benefits or the payoff, church. When we live like Jesus wants us to live, when we love people like Jesus wants us to love them, loving our enemies, doing these crazy hard things, guess what? We are, we are storing up for ourselves credit in heaven. Right? It's, it's not credit on earth. It's credit in heaven. Um, he says, then your reward will be great. Um, finally, number six on your outline there. Uh, distinctly different love. And this is what it's all about. Distinctly different love means following the Lord's example. Uh, distinctly different love means following the Lord's example. You know, there, in Scripture, in Greek, there's different words for love, right? We've, we've got agape, eros, phileo. There, there's all these different terms that are used for love. One is, uh, and sometimes the Bible uses them interchangeably. Uh, some people will say, well, every time you see agape, that, that's God's love, unconditional love. Well, I want to point out that there's some passages in John where it says, do not love agape, love the world. World uh, and what's in it, you know, and so uh, sometimes they're used interchangeably, but it became known a couple of centuries later after this, really, that the agape love is God's unconditional love, right? Uh, the philea love there you see is, is kind of like a brotherly love that we have, a familial love, a family companion, and then the eros love is kind of, you know, it's a, a romantic love, right? So there's all these different Greek, Greek terms for love that are used in the New Testament documents. Well, here, when Jesus says, love your enemies, it's, it's agape, church. It's love them unconditionally in that godly kind of love. It's, it's not love them like your brother. <laughs> it's not love them like your wife. But it's, it's love them unconditionally like God would love them. Uh, we, we aim 
to, to have the unconditional love that God does, right? Is if we're going to be distinctly different, um, we can't just love everybody like the world loves because the world loves you for a minute and then the second you do something else, they'll cancel culture you and they'll drop you like a bad habit, right? But, but we as Christians, we're called to love people differently. And, and we need to love people in that agape love. Um, look, look at the last two verses there, the last part of verse 35 and 36 again. He says, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked, be merciful just as your heavenly father or your father is merciful. So there we see the example. God is kind to the ungrateful. God is merciful. In church, we should be too. We should love people and show them kindness and mercy and grace and all the other things that are not mentioned just in that, that one sentence that God gives you and I. All of us. Um, you know, by the way, Jesus didn't, he, Jesus didn't just tell his disciples to, to do this and he walked over there and just did the complete opposite, right? This is what Jesus lived and did himself. He lived it. Jesus didn't ask us as his followers to do something that he was not willing to do himself. And, and the, the verse I want to end on here before we have our invitation is, is, is Romans 5.8. I, I love this verse. Romans 5.8 says that, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, I don't know if you, you've thought about this, uh, but before you gave your life to Christ, the Bible calls people who have, have not chosen to follow Christ yet enemies of God. Yes, we're all made in God's image, but some of us might have not chosen to follow Christ. And, and according to the scripture, we're the enemies of God. Until we choose his grace gift and, and are covered by his blood and, and ask him to, to come into our life and to change us, we're enemy. You know, like it says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we didn't care a thing about him, he died for us. And I think that's the perfect example, church, of how you and I, we, we need to treat and to love God our enemies, whoever your enemies might be, whether it's the rival school or it's somebody who hates Christianity, whoever that, that person might be or persons might be in your life, we need to love them like Christ loved us. And, and, and that's, that's what Scripture teaches. So, just throwing out some questions to you this morning here, you know. Have have you asked Christ into your life? Are you following Christ? Are you still an enemy of God? Are you ready to ask Him to come into your life and to help you this morning? Are you ready to say, God, I want to love people like, like you love me. I'm unworthy, but you still love me and you still died on the cross for my sins. Uh, maybe you're here this morning and you've never ask Christ to come in your life and, and you don't have a relationship with Christ. I want to help you with that. You can do that this morning. You can do that at home while you're watching online. If you've never asked Christ to come into your life to help you, to help change you, and to transform you, to have the kind of love that, that He has for us. Um, the Bible says that, that, that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, it, he's holding out that gift and are you ready to take it this morning? Are you ready to receive it? Uh, I want to ask if you just close your eyes by your heads. If you're here this morning and, and you've never asked Christ to come into your life and you've decided that today's the day, I'm not going to live one more day as an enemy of the Lord. I want to, to be a child of the King. I want to receive eternal life, the gift that God's given me. Uh, say, say a prayer to the Lord, something like this. Say, Dear God, I'm coming to you today. I know that I've sinned and fallen short and that I can't earn my way to heaven. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that He is God, that He rose again. 
and conquered death. Today, God, forgive me of my sins as I place my faith in you. Help me to live for you and follow you. Come into my life and give me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to have a time of invitation here. The staff will be down here. Uh, if you want to pray with somebody, uh, they can pray with you. If you want to come down and pray by yourself, you can pray at the altar about anything that's going on. I'll be glad to talk with you. Um, for you, uh, church, you see the, the four things up there. You know, Maybe you're already a Christian. You've already given your life to Christ. And I just maybe today one of those four things... Is, is just speaking loud and clear to you this morning. Maybe that if I'm really going to be uh, uh, loving my enemies, I need to be more active and do actions. Maybe I need to, to ask God to bless my enemies. Maybe I need to pray for my enemies. Maybe I need to live my life by the golden rule and, and treat them how I want to be treated. Maybe one of those things just is speaking to you this morning. Uh, that's between you and the Lord. I just pray that whatever He puts on your heart, you will be obedient to. And, and the question there says how will you this week church work on loving your enemies I, i'm going to pray for all of you that are here that heard this message this morning god give every single one of these people a chance to love their enemy this week maybe that that might be bad but that's an opportunity for us to respond whether whether that's just praying for Muslims who, who hate America because it's 9-11 and maybe whatever. Maybe it's praying for a, a friend at school that is mad at you. Whatever it might be. Uh, I just pray that you will be obedient this morning. Let's, let's pray and then we'll have an invitation. God, we love you this morning. Lord, I pray that you will work in the lives and the hearts of, of those of us who are here this morning. Help us to love our enemies no matter who they are. If they're a Republican, Democrat, male, female, uh, homosexual, whatever, Lord, help us to love people, uh, love enemies like you love us, God. Uh, thank you for this time, Lord. We just pray uh, that you will move in our midst this morning. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Feel stand. out this invitation time lord i pray that uh, that we will first and foremost lord work on, on loving you uh, our our creator our sustainer our savior uh, lord and i pray that this week lord i do pray that for every single person that has an opportunity this morning to to work on not not just loving their family and their friends and, and those who think well of them, but Lord, help us to love our enemies this week, Lord. May we pray for them. May we bless them. May we ask God to show favor to them. Lord, we love you, and we now we just come to this time where we give our tithes, our offerings, Lord. I pray that you'll take the gifts that are given this morning, take them, apply, and use it for your kingdom work here at Westside, and as well as in our, our 
county in Gwinnett and our state and around the world as we give to missions. Lord, we love you and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat.